Well, here we are getting ready to waterproof my rucksack. So here's what you're going to need. Your clean, dry, cotton canvas item to, uh, to waterproof. Your waterproofing agent of choice, which should ideally be made for it or capable of doing it. Uh, paintbrush, and I've got old rags down here too. And some hot water. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the lid off of this, put it in here, and then fill it up with hot water till it's almost the top. And let that soften up, and we'll be back as soon as that's all ready. As melted as it's going to get here. So, just to give you an idea what I'm going to do, because it's going to take me a while. So here's my item. Make sure you turn all your seams out so that they're, they're all proud and not sucked in. Although usually when you are proud, you tend to suck your gut in, but whatevs. And we'll get some of this stuff. And... And drag it out pretty thin, although maybe this top flap I'll kind of go heavy on. But yeah, so I'm going to do this whole bag like this, and then maybe take it out a bit more with the rag, and then take the heat gun to it. And I'm not going to worry about the zippers, because if they're waxed up as well, you'll find A, that they'll slide a lot nicer, and B, it might still be enough to beat up the water so it doesn't penetrate it. And we'll get this done. It's going to take a while. Well, we're back. And I'm going to explain this because you're obviously not going to be able to hear me over the heat gun. But uh, when you're doing this, go really heavy on your seams. Like, pack it in there good. You're going to want uh, no entry points in there. And even though these straps, even the, the hanging loop here, I mean, you, you might tell yourself, oh, what's this going to hurt if that gets wet? Well, what this is going to do it's just going to wick moisture in to the inside of your bag and you don't want that so so yeah this is basically the whole top flap done it didn't take too long actually it went quicker than I thought and I'm going to melt it in and you'll get to see how that goes as long as I plug this thing in things will go great and I've got the little double boiler here that definitely helps quite a bit Fired up. Somewhere it's not going to melt into my blanket because that's never happened before. So, as you can see, actually on the, the camera here, it doesn't look much different. So, when I did the snow shield, it definitely changed the appearance a bit. So, this is the before, and this is the after. It's actually not much different at all. Interesting. Well, the proof will be in the pudding. We'll see how it performs. And little things like this corner here I'll go back over and make sure that that's all good I think I'm just gonna zoom in the old school way here instead of holding it up close because it obviously doesn't want to focus but that is waterproofing 101 I'm gonna do both sides of this flap because if it's open to get into the bag and it's raining out I don't want that soaking in there especially if I have like say my uh, my uh, fire kit in there, although that really should be wrapped up in something else as well to be safe. But say I don't want something getting wet in there. Um, yeah, you never know. 
So maybe when it's all finished, we'll do a little test on it. A few more things to mention. If you have plastic zippers like I do, or if your pack has plastic buckles, be careful with the heat on those. You don't want to melt it. And once your zipper's deformed, unless you have a wife like mine who's good with a sewing machine, or you, you yourself are, or know somebody that is, you're up to proverbial creek, and you want to keep the heat moving around so it doesn't concentrate in one spot too fast. Just kind of move it around. Uh, and another reason for doing this in the places you wouldn't think would be as crucial as well, like the straps, is similar to a leather boot. Once it wets out, it's going to increase in weight quite a bit. So even if your stuff is dry, say you had something like this, put everything in a garbage bag inside, which is actually what some people do, which isn't bad. Uh, once this bag gets wet, it's going to add a significant amount of weight to it. So Yet another good reason to use the stuff. Guys, here's a moment of truth. Let's see what happens. One-handed. Cold water because hot water will melt wax, no problem. And there we go. It's crazy. I'll let it lay right on the uh, zipper, but yeah. Nice. to see my messy bathroom which is I guess similar to my messy shop here so yeah um, it would definitely make more sense to put this in a proper double boiler I ended up melting it with the gun inside here while it still had hot water for a couple of cycles that worked much better than just putting this stuff in with it you're gonna want good ventilation too I set off the uh, smoke detector once and gave myself a headache twice and you definitely want to move that gun around so that it doesn't heat up but, and there's the, uh, the waist strap that I did up. Now I can switch over from my haversack to a rucksack. Well, hopefully that helps you. Once again, I apologize for the extremely low-tech, low-budget videos. But hopefully you uh, learned something from it, you like it, share and subscribe if you feel like it. And, uh, yeah, if you've got your own sort of concoctions as far as making up your own stuff goes, then by all means, I know I've seen one, if you're looking for beeswax and it's not cheap or easy to find in your area, look for the natural toilet uh, gaskets, the o-rings that go underneath your toilet, they're made out of beeswax and they're like cheap, like under $2 cheap usually. So there's a good source for your beeswax, and of course boiled linseed oil is dirt cheap as well. And you can make your own. So we will see you guys later on. Hopefully next time you see us we'll actually be doing some bushcraft. See you later.